On Sunday, we celebrated Pentecost, this holiday in the church year in which we remember how the Holy Spirit came upon the people after Jesus' death and resurrection and then ascension into heaven. Now, it was such a scene that those who were outsiders actually thought the people that were gathered there were drunk. If you remember, the scripture in Acts shares about how it looked like people had flames above their head and their tongues were speaking in languages that not everybody understood. I've been reflecting on Pentecost a little bit this last week, thinking about how the Holy Spirit shows up in our lives. Now, obviously, most of the time, it's not one of these big scenes, right? It's not one of these big spectacles that outsiders looking in are going, what is wrong with those people? <laughs> are they drunk? It's only nine in the morning. But the Holy Spirit does come upon each of us comes upon each of us to bring us power, to empower us to have the words to be able to speak, just like those uh, first disciples, that empowers us to be able to go out and do the work of God. So a lot of times when I would do children's time with kids and we would talk about the Holy Spirit, I would have a fan sitting here. In the summer, it's a perfect time to think about the ways in which we cool ourselves off, how we feel that cooling presence within us. And so I would bring out a fan. And with that fan, uh, I would sit it there and not plug it in, not turn it on, and ask the kids if they felt anything, if they felt that cool breeze upon their uh, faces. And of course, they wouldn't. And so I would ask them, well, how come? How come you can't feel that power of the wind on you? And they would look around and they would notice that it was not plugged into the power source. So we'd plug it into the power source and not turn it on. And then I would ask them, okay, now, now what do you feel? Well, they wouldn't feel anything. And so we would problem solve again and they would realize that, oh, you have to turn on the fan. So there's a couple ways for us to think about the Holy Spirit in our lives. The first one is thinking about how we need to be plugged in. We need to be plugged into that power source that brings out that power within us, that gives us that power to be able to move, to be able to work, to be able to do good in the world. But the second part of that, and maybe one of the most important parts, is that we have to turn on that power source. A lot of times we go about our lives and we forget that we are supposed to be that healing hands of God in the world. That it is our job, our work, to be able to make God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. We figure that maybe that'll just happen or that our work really is just to come to church and not really to do that work. Well, we come to church to get plugged in, to have that power source available to us. But turning on that fan is going out into the world and actually putting our hands and feet to work. So it's two parts, being plugged into that power source and then turning that on as we go out into the world to make a difference. And if both of those things are happening, then the Holy Spirit will move, that change will happen. People will be able to see or feel a difference in the world around us. So this week we're finishing up the book series, Make a Difference. I hope it's been beneficial to you. I hope it has been a place that has helped you to think about the ways in which God is calling you to make a difference, how God has given you unique talents and gifts, unique life experiences, and a softening of your heart to be able to do this work in the world that is so desperately needed. The work of justice, the work of um, peacemaking, the work of providing a space for love, uh, uh, the work of providing hope to people who are hurting. These are all different things that we can do. But oftentimes, uh, I don't know about you, but I can feel really overwhelmed. 
There are so much hurt if we really look around our community. There is so much pain, there's so much grief. So what, are, what am I to do? How can I really make a difference? And that, that goes to those smaller issues, but through those bigger issues as well. How can I really make a difference? Well, God tells us the story, Jesus tells us the story of the mustard seed. How if you just have the faith of a mustard seed, how you are able to do great things. Now, often we think of um, our purpose on earth is to do something huge, something uh, extraordinary that we don't want to think about doing those little things, those little pieces that will help us and help our communities thrive. But if we look at the wisdom of many who have gone before us, if we look at the ways in which people have given over and over and over, it's about being obedient. It's about being obedient to God and into going out into our communities and making the small differences wherever we can. Mother Teresa, she often reminded us that we are called to do small things with great love. So what are the small things that you are called to do? What are the small things that you can do with great love to make a difference in your communities, in the lives of people around you. So in his book, James Harnish shares this story of a woman in his congregation who had a vision of a teddy bear ministry in which small bears would be scattered around the pews of the church. And each one of those small bears had a note attached to it, saying that it represented the prayers and concerns of those who were in the congregation. You see, she believed that this small act, this one small act um, would, would benefit people and the spirit would guide people who needed the encouragement, who needed to know that the congregation was there for them, the people who needed the prayers, that they would sit by one of these bears when they came to worship. Well, uh, Reverend Harnish shares that he underestimated the importance of this ministry, but he was really wrong because this ministry, her faithfulness of following her passion and finding this small way to serve went out into the world in abundant ways. He writes, after every Sunday, people would come to me after worship with tears in their eyes and one of those bears in their hands. They would tell me about the family member or friend to whom they would deliver it and ask me to pray with them. He continues, when I visited in hospitals and nursing homes, I was often welcomed by one of those bears sitting beside the patient or find someone holding a bear in their arms as a sign of God's love for them. In a few years time, more than 1,000 bears had gone from the sanctuary as a witness of the church's love and concern. It was a small act of kindness that made a big difference in the lives of both the people who gave and the people who received them. Those little bears became a finite expression of the infinite compassion of God. You see those small mustard seeds, those little things that we can do to be faithful and a lot of times we get discouraged because we feel like the little things won't make a difference. The little things won't be enough. But that is exactly what God is calling us to, being obedient to the little things, the little ways in which we can share God's power and love in our communities and help change just one life, one moment. At the end of John Wesley's life, he wrote this last letter to William Wilberforce, Force, sorry, Wilber, William Wilberforce. And he was leading this movement against slavery in the parliament back in England. So from his deathbed, Wesley offered these words of encouragement. Unless God has raised you up for this very thing, you will be worn out by the opposition of men and devils. But if God before you, who can be against you? Are all of them together stronger than God? 
or be not weary of well-doing. Go on in the name of God and in the power of his might till every American slavery, the vilest that ever saw the sun, shall vanish away before it. John Wesley understood the importance of being connected to that power source that God has. That power source that empowers us to be able to go out into the world and do hard things, even the smallest of things. John Wesley understood that we have to be connected to that power source because there's no way that we can do this work on our own. But if God is calling us to that work, if God is empowering us to do that work, then who can be against us? We know that God goes before us. And as we are connected to that power source, the Holy Spirit, and as we turn on those gifts and the call that God has for us, who can be against us? I wonder what it would look like in our communities if we all were faithful to those little things. If we all were faithful to the passions that we have inside of us and the gifts that God has called us to. I wonder what our communities would look like if we were agents of God's hands and feet in the world, bringing love and hope and justice and peace for all of those who are searching and need it. My friends, as we go forward into this new year of the church, this new year where God is calling us to go and to make a difference, I pray that you find your space, your calling, the way in which God has uniquely blessed you and put passions within you to go and to do the work that God has for you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you, will guide you into those new spaces, will give you wisdom in how to be able to accomplish far more than you could ever imagine. And I pray that you will stay plugged into that power source, to the Holy Spirit who is empowering you to go and to make a difference in our world. Amen.